Hi, I'm Danny. I'm a professional cartoonist and a hobbyist game developer slash everything else-er. So for the past few months, I've really been wanting to learn how to code. There's a lot of reasons why I want to learn how to code. The first one being that I really like the idea of doing a game jam on my own one day. And I also like the idea of helping out with the other projects that I've got going on. I want to be more than just an artist. So I've been doing a lot of research trying to figure out what exactly I wanted to learn. The decision is not only what programming language I want to learn, but also what game engine I want to use. And I really just, I didn't know. I've worked in RenPy. I have interest in Godot. I think Unity would be the most profitable and perhaps smartest move to make, but that would require learning C Sharp, which is not the easiest program to learn. I've done a lot of research. Because I've been waffling on what programming language to learn, I feel like I've been spending a lot of time learning about learning instead of actually learning. But here's what I've figured out so far about each of the languages I'm interested in. The programming language family tree, as I understand it, is that shit started popping off in the 1950s when computer science was becoming the hot new thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where it starts being relevant to me and making games is C. And C, I know basically nothing about. I know that C++ is uh, an iteration on C. Do I know what changed? No, I don't. <laughs> so coming off of C is a bunch of different stuff. We've got something I'm actually interested in, which is Python. And Python is used mainly for like app development and websites and machine learning and stuff like that. So it's not particularly, I don't know, um, suited for games. I say that, but there is Pygame and also RenPy. And I do have an interest in RenPy. However, I find RenPy to be a little bit restrictive in what you can and can't do. However, I watched a lot of YouTube videos uh, by programmers and coders who said, if I could learn to code from the beginning, what I would do is learn and start with Python. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll check out some Python. So Python, not totally writing it off yet. And coming off of Python is GDScript, which is Godot's native programming language. It's very similar in syntax, but it's specifically tailored to making games, which is something I am interested in. I've also heard that GDScript is beginner friendly, and if I am anything, it is a beginner. Now on the other side of C++ is C Sharp. And that's where things get interesting because C Sharp is not beginner friendly. However, it is the programming language used by Unity. And Unity is like the key to the big bucks, you know? Like, if I could learn Unity and C Sharp, my job opportunities, if I wanted to sidestep into video games, would totally just explode. So I'm going to outline this in red <laughs> because it's really the smart decision now. Uh, also coming off of C Sharp, or the C family really, is Game Maker Language, which is the native programming language of Game Maker Studio 2. I have an interest in Game Maker Studio 2 because who doesn't want to make the next fucking Undertale? <laughs> so which one am I gonna learn? What am I going to invest time and effort into? I think because I'm a follower and I wanna do this right, I'm gonna start with Python. In you go. Let's learn. So I settled in to learn Python. I queued up probably the most watched Python tutorial, Python in one hour, and I I just got started. Opened up Visual Code Studio, I took notes, I listened, I paid attention, and my god, it was so dry and so boring. I didn't feel like I was really learning anything. I don't even know. Like, it was so not a fun experience. And I mean, I know learning doesn't have to be fun, but this was so... And then it started getting really deep into math, and I was like, I don't know if I'll ever even use this. I should clarify, the tutorial was very clear and very well done. It was just not a good fit for the way that I learned things. So, you know what? 
Python, I don't know about that. Maybe, uh, maybe never mind on Python. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's, let's take that out. That's not gonna work anymore. So Python has been eliminated. Goodbye, Python. I did like the syntax and grammar and like layout and setup of Python. If you watch my other videos, you know I'm doing a self-imposed game jam with some friends and the program that we're using is Godot. So you know what? Maybe I'll try Godot. Let's try Godot. In you go, Godot. Hour long tutorial fired up and ready to go, I started taking notes. I wrote 10 pages of notes. I learned about variables and variable types, integers, floats, strings, objects, what dynamic is versus typed. Oh, I still don't quite understand that. I learned about constants, operators, and operations, comparing values, conditions, if else and else if statements, evaluating as booleans, lists of values, which are arrays, objects, and classes. I don't know if I can say I retained that information just yet, but it was a start and it didn't start to click, but I was having fun, and that set me on a path. A path to finding GD Quest. GD Quest came to the fucking rescue. I don't think I've ever followed like an online tutorial that I understood and parsed as well as I did the stuff made by Nathan. Dude, thank you so much. But here's the real kicker. I had something in mind. I wasn't just following tutorials. I wanted to build a character creator. I wanted it to be able to fully customize the color of the hair, the eyes, and the skin. I wanted different hairstyles that you could flip through that would remember the color. I wanted different mouths, different noses, different eyes. And I wanted the game to be able to remember the player's decisions when designing their character and have that apply to the character sprites going forward. I worked on this for a week, and after about 12 hours of studying and experimentation, I had something to show for it. I've been following so many fucking tutorials. <laughs> so many. And I think I managed to build up a, uh, a working scene here that I'm, pr I'm pretty proud of. So I've got the player and buttons to color pick the hair, the eyes, and the skin tone. And I've got these buttons here, which are these, and they are listening to signals for the color, uh, the scripts and the color nodes. So let me play it for you. So we've got our player here. My computer recognizes it as a game, so it, this fucking NVIDIA thing shows up. But, um, so I can change the color of the hair, which also changes the color of the eyebrows. I'm very proud that I was able to do that. For the eyes, I have, you can see there's a little shine that is also receptive to the color of the eyes. That is because I made an entirely new child node for just the highlight and then wrote just a tiny scrap of code that makes it transparent. So you've got a nice lively, instead of like a flat eye, it has a bit of a highlight. And um, then you can change the skin tone. What I, what I want to do now is uh, make this <laughs> prettier and also somehow make it so that these color pickers are smaller, like just this and also up here. Like, I don't know why they're all spawning down here. I've got no idea why it's doing that. And yeah, I want to make this look a little bit more like my mock-up. I also want to make it so that the player can input their name and stuff like that. Like I'm trying my hardest, but that's what I've got so far. So thank you for watching. I am now clocking in around 15 hours of learning Godot and here's what I have to show for it. As you can see, I've organized things as best as I can. I've got the character creator scene and inside of that, I've got the camera, the, pi the color picker buttons, the player. I've got all these buttons with signals going to the correct scripts. I've got an artillery of different facial expressions. Let me show you. Here's what we have, which is pretty much where we left off. I can choose the skin tone, the eye color, the hair color. The eyebrows are on top of the hair, my bad. I'll fix that later. But you can also change the nose. The mouth.
the hair. This is all I was able to accomplish right now. Basically, everything that I've done is beyond the limits of what I understand right now. This was absolutely an intermediate affair, and as a beginner, uh, it was pretty lofty of me to even try this. I'm very happy and satisfied with what I was able to do, but it was a lot of work. I could not figure out how to make the save system work. I think I put the, uh, let's see. This is as far as I got into the save system. So we've got, uh, class name, character, extends resource, export variable current hair, and then export variable co current hair color. There was an error. I did not understand the error. I got rid of this line, and then this one showed up as an error as well. So I think all of these are uh, an error. Don't know why the hair is working. I, I don't understand pretty much anything about what's going on. As you can see, I, I barely just, I barely, this isn't even scraping the surface. This is like looking at the surface and then holding a scraper. And even that was too much. But I'm pretty proud of everything that I've done and the fact that I actually understand what I'm reading, like when I go through everything. That's really cool. I do think that I bungled up the code a little bit when I was trying to implement the save system. It's all messy now and I'm. it still works, but I'm not happy with what is going on. And I think I need to learn a little bit more before I go back to it. In the next installment, I think I want to focus more on basic game stuff like UI screens and importing character animations and things like that. But I'm also not ruling out the idea of spending next episode, you know, playing around with Unity or Game Maker. It's probably not a good idea to learn more than one programming language at a time. But you know, I'm a special kind of guy. Maybe it would work out for me. Probably not. No. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me while I try to teach myself a new skill. And thank you especially to everyone who has made a Godot tutorial. You're a hero. All right, see you next time. Bye.